Welcome back. We just heard from our first entrepreneur, Cole Diamond of the Gift Network. Now it's time for the competition, and it's a very different idea. Our second entrepreneur is Don Toporowski. He's VP of Sales and Marketing with Circuit Meter. 90 seconds. Take it away. Uh, recent large investments in smart meters have resulted in some great advances in metering technology. Unfortunately, all the gains have been for the utilities. If you're an energy user, things are pretty much the same. You still get your same old energy bill, which tells you how much energy you use, but little else. Circuit Meter changes all this. Circuit Meter has developed a technology that allows energy users to measure and monitor the energy consumption in their buildings at a circuit breaker level. We gather all this data and send it to the cloud. Then with analytics, we allow the building manager to see what's really happening in your building in real time to identify energy waste, reduce peak demand, and improve their building operation. We do all of this at one-tenth the cost of traditional meters. We spent the last two years developing, testing, and patenting a meter that today does what it took 12 to do in the past. Then we combined it with big data. And it's the combination of very low-cost hardware with low-cost storage of data that enables a technology that is totally revolutionary in metering. This month, we're rolling out our first commercial pilots, and we're here today to try to uh, find investors who might like to join our first investor, the Mars Venture Capital Fund, in any future rounds. Whoa, precise, like your meters. <laughs> How much would you start this off? So, you know, building on the theme of traction, uh, tell me a little bit more about your pilot. Uh, who, uh, who are you doing the pilot with? What kind of, what are, what are some of the milestones that you want to get out of the pilot? We spent the last few months as we were waiting for the product to come off the production line, which is coming <clears throat> off this week, uh, talking to customers we wanted to pilot with. The first pilots will be with an agency of the Ontario government who has 25 locations, a fast food chain that has 1,000 locations, one of Canada's largest Canadian banks that has 3,000 locations, and one of Canada's largest facility manager who manages over 9,000 locations across Canada. These are some of the more interesting ones for us. But at the same time, we're going to be um, executing pilots with other customers in smaller niche markets, which include uh, houses of worship, hospitality, uh, health care, and education. So you're installing the hardware and then you are actually setting up the, the dashboards to kind of start tracking uh, different kind of uh, performance indicators and things like that? That's right. One of the things that makes the technology unique is that uh, the technology comes with a dashboard supplied with us. The user can go on the internet right off the bat and see their energy in real time. This is quite different from the legacy systems from some of the big uh, building auto automation uh, houses they require all kinds of programming and integration. This thing, you're right off the bat, is, as soon as you plug it in, you can see your energy and start uh, addressing your consumption. Right, and, and so talk to me a little bit about your revenue model. Uh, uh, the revenue comes from two streams. The first is from uh, equipment sales. And as I said, this technology has a tremendous price advantage against anything else in the market. But it also comes from monitoring fees. We charge users who install the meter a monthly fee to access the data and utilize the dashboard. And as the uh, business starts to succeed, the monitoring fees become a bigger and bigger and more stable part of the revenue stream, increasing its value. Terrific. Yeah. Duke. Okay, so, so tell me how I would, uh, and, and this is more of my ignorance here, but tell me how I would use it as a, as a property manager or the World Bank. So I get all this data, and I know that it can make, like, how, how do I use the data to, to save, save the money? So, Let me give you an example. Yeah. If you're running a business that has 3,000 locations, whether it's uh, fast food or a bank, a lot of what you have to do is create operational efficiencies. If I am to meter 3,000 locations very inexpensively and bring you that data, what you can very quickly do is identify those branches that are operating most efficiently and identify those ones that are the worst. Mm -hmm. And then you can move your entire operations to operate on the model of the most efficient. 
You can sort of do that right now with energy bills. You can find out which ones are using the most energy, but you have no idea how, you're u- how they're using it, so you can't really make improvements. Do you go into the next level of integration? So, for example, now that you know, the question Duke asked, like, I mean, we've got, we understand this building is more efficient than this one. How do I now proactively, can I kind of, for example, go into the building remotely and start, you know, using, changing the controls and things like that? Can I work with the controls, thermostats and all that kind of yeah, stuff? Yeah, the meter has the capability to communicate with all legacy uh, technologies. But what your question brings us to is one of the exciting things about the technology and how we get it to market. And that's through our channels, which we call value-added resellers. These value-added resellers come in all kinds of styles right now, including companies like Honeywell and Johnson Controls, who are doing billions of energy retrofits for the federal government, the US, and other customers. Uh, our market strategy is to sell this technology through those uh, partners, big and small, and help them uh, create more value for their customers. So the real competitive advantage is the creation of low-cost data. And we're not really in the business of utilizing that to increase performance. We're going to leave that to our partners so they can make as much money as possible. Okay? I'm telling remind us how much you're hoping to raise at this stage. Uh, the last uh, round was uh, raised with the Mars Venture Capital Fund. We've been uh, quite parsimonious, and we have almost all that money uh, still available. Uh, but I suspect that if things go as planned, uh, we're going to want to accelerate the market introduction, and I suspect probably next year we'd be looking for two or three million dollars. When you say we, who's we? Uh, the company was founded by uh, two men who developed the technology. Prior to developing this, they led uh, the development of the mic push to talk network, which was uh, with ClearNet and eventually sold to Telus. Then they invented the first internet-enabled, uh, internet-enabled mobile tracking system to track fleets. This attracted hundreds of thousands of subscribers and was eventually sold. Uh, so they developed this technology. Uh, I met them through Mars, and I immediately told them that uh, I want to help them launch this and bring it to the market. So and there's three? Yeah, there's three of us. Okay. We've got to take a break. Thanks so much. Coming up, decision time. Both of our entrepreneurs stand before the panel, ready to hear which business idea won the judges over or not.